Hi, this is BZ and welcome to Around the Quantum Campfire. It is October 29th, 2018, and we have a whole bunch of creator beings here to play. And we're going to go from seemingly simple play topics to seemingly out there, but actually they're all related. I'm talking about the questions and, and focuses that people um, bring in. And I'd love to actually start, uh, Sheila, with yours. <laughs> oh, that figures. <laughs> well, no, because it's a, it's a, I had to laugh when you sent it. So Sheila Rowan says, uh, I have been in a very weird place. This was last night. You can't think of anything presently. Feel sort of blah, meh, just sort of blank this month. Maybe that's a question, and I can guarantee you it is a question. Um, do others have similar experiences during what is... And this is interesting, so I'd like you to play with this to start with, in particular, if you like, what is perceived as an integration period. So, are you still blah and meh, and, and are you thinking it was integration, and what gave you that thought? Wow, that's a big one. <laughs> that's a lot right there, BT. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, there's still blah and meh, not as much as there was when I wrote that. There, there was a um, perceivable shift within my being today during a conversation that I was having with another being who was sort of going through what appeared to be something a bit similar. Uh, we were just sort of sharing experiences back and forth as far as that's concerned. Um, the reason I chose those words, I heard, you know, as you were reading that, um, I chose perceived integration because that is the way I am feeling about what I'm going through. Or partly too because of the experiences that I've had over the last several days that have brought this feeling forward for me that too um and yet i'm also aware that maybe not with all the uh visuals and um 3d effect and all of that that i had but I'm feeling that there's lots of beings who are having similar, not experiences exactly, but, you know, just things that can cause the feelings within my being that that experience had. Again, mine was all alone and all internal, but I'm also aware as I see you know, those around me, there's some that seem to be having the same response to things in their world that m maybe they don't hold in the same way I'm holding mine or whatever, but it, it seems like the feeling that they give off or the reactions that they have could be sort of similar. So that's why I use that terminology. So you, are you talking about the blah and the meh are similar? No, the, no, the, uh, I, I was talking in terms of why I use the word perceived integration. Oh, okay. I, I perceive that all of that has sort of been stimulated by that period of integration, but I called it a perceived integration. And that's what I was right just then explaining or sharing my thoughts on. The reasoning I, I chose the words perceived integration for me um, and what I felt and experienced. And, I, and it is really a question, is that blah and meh sort of a byproduct or a, not a byproduct, but
in some ways it seems like a pause for something and just sort of hmm, not good, not bad, not just weird, just odd, just, I don't know. Can't, can't put it really in words. What well, it is. Let's have another one jump in. Cause we got lots of experiences right here. <laughs> uh, Sheila, if I may, I, I wanted to ask you, are you, is this coincide with you feeling a little bored? Oh, oh no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, then I'm lost. I was going to say, you know, when you throw a ball up in the air and it, and, and it's up there and before it comes down, it's not up or it's not down. It's just up there. Yeah. Would that might describe it? Well, it could, it could have a little bit about, yeah, as far as the pause part is concerned, the yeah. oddness, the weirdness during this pause, if you will, is in, okay, so on one layer, it feels a bit unsettling, mm -hmm. and yet on another layer, it's like, eh. Uh, you know, and, and it's, I'm, I'm aware, you know, I'm, when, when you said about the boring, because of what I've experienced of late, there's no, there's nothing boring in regards to that. Um, so I don't, I really don't know. And I, that's why I said this, I wasn't quite sure if I should come this evening because of this feeling that I've had. Now, like I said, I've had some shift in that but it's still that weird and odd feeling if you will so has anybody else had a sense of what a feeling like um what she was describing another way uh that i would describe it in the times that i have it is where um you don't feel like doing something but you're not tired per se it's like a void of course moment on yes a, on a grander scale yet it isn't for me anyways at a specific thing per se a and you can fluctuate from one moment being me to oh oh inspired about something and then eh. <laughs> So anybody else experiencing in the past or in these? Well, I'll, I'll jump in and add what I'm seeing. So how I would describe it, and I think this is probably similar to what she was explaining or sharing, is that everything is changing so rapidly within us. It's changing our our ability to reference of where we're at. And this has been my experience. And so it's like, it's like uh, waking up in your house and everything is in a different place. And you're like, well, wait a minute, you know, what happened here? It's like having a new housekeeper keeper comes in and moves everything and, and you're lost. It's like, where was that? It was over here. And, and you, but not so much the physicality, but the energetic, signature of everything around us seems to be changing and it can make you very uncomfortable um if you go there you know it's a choice it's a choice of how can i be comfortable in my skin so to speak and just know and trust that everything is evolving just as it should or am i going to get worked up about it frantic or whatever um and, and that to me is kind of a it's, you know, human nature to kind of resist a little bit of, of what change is occurring. We kind of like to keep things um, status quo. I mean, I think that's part of human nature. And so as things are changing, it's it's part of like, wow, okay, you know, can I accept this? And, and it, it really can happen really quickly, and it also can be a struggle. I, I think it's a personal choice of what we choose. So that's really all I can say about it. I've had this experience on and off for quite some time I, I mean years um, recently I've been witnessing it with um, people that are close to me in physicality of 
of like in the last two days, people have come to me kind of out of surprising of like with questions that I never kind of expected them to, to come up with, which was welcome. And, but also it was cool. I mean, I really enjoyed it. So I think everybody's going through something like this, not, you know, it's the same thing, but something similar. Um, if I can jump into what came to me as, as you, as you were talking, Sheila, and then also um, uh, Noel and Talisman adding to it was, or Talisman, sorry, um, was this feeling of, you know, when you see something and your brain tries to figure out what it is and you reference things that you've seen before and you go, oh, that's what that is. Or you feel something and you go, oh, that feels like some, you know, this or a nudge. I think we are getting impacted by a lot of different signals that our brains don't know what it is yet. And so it's kind of like we're looking for that interpretation or something. We're going like, oh, it feels a little weird. Not really sure. I haven't felt this before. Don't know yet how to interpret it um, because we don't have that frame of reference right now in our, in our systems. Um, so it kind of like, it is a bit of integration, if you will, of just receiving it right now and allowing it to kind of, um, flow and do its work in your heart to, to kind of learn the language, the new language that we're receiving are these new energies. Um, so it is a little unsettling. It's like going to a country that you don't speak the language and you <laughs> can't communicate yet. And you're there trying you to find language and figure it out. And, and, um, and so that's the sense I get from it, from what you described, Sheila. I don't know. Well, if that I have to right. say that hearing, hearing what you just said, Gina, my, my entire being went, ah, that's, that's it. That's, that's, exa that's a beautiful uh, way to describe that, that I had not, I hadn't had the words for. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the not just the energetic experience that I mean for for me it was an, an energy it was energetic it was physical to a degree it was it, you know it was a very visceral multi-dimensional experience that I so you're you're smack on with what you're saying there mm -hmm. and so yeah thank you for that that's really I've heard a lot of people describe similar to what you're uh, talking about, Sheila. Um, and one way they describe it too is that they um, they used to like something. Maybe it's a, a flavor of something, or the fragrance of something, or the, the you know going to do this kind of thing or that kind of thing. And it's and it's it's not the same maybe the same level or scale of like and so part of them is well, well what's wrong with me why don't i like that anymore you know whether i'm eating this or tasting this or drinking this or smelling this or going for a walk or whatever it is or this person it could be a whole host of things so they have you know just the change and because we crap up with, you know, judgments. Okay. But now there is in a whole argument, well, why don't I like it? And then it's this, and then it's that. And why am I, you know, and, and, uh, and then everybody seems to remember in various ways, Oh, I could take a deep breath and give myself a break for a moment. And look at that. <laughs> it's just, is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. Rational mind is getting a big workout because it wants to go dot all the t you know I's and cross the t's and, and deliver you with a you know an answer. And even it's from Lux, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and that's happening a lot, BZ. What you um, described there, music that used to be enjoyable. It's kind of like, yeah, don't, it doesn't elicit the same feelings mm -hmm. certain foods that, you know, used to be enjoyable or kind of like, I oh, don't really know if I like that anymore. 
Um, so yeah, it's complete. I completely have experienced that multiple times and, uh, events or activities that used to be interesting, like you said, or enjoyable or just like, mm, not so much anymore, you know, but other things that I didn't used to like, I right. totally enjoy. So it's, it's just a, a resonate resonating with different things. And the, take that in the same, um, in the same kind of venue. So, so the way that you use to process information or flow with creativity or mm -hmm. solve a problem, you know, if it's more linear for work. So all of those things are all shifting and changing. And um, I don't remember, I think it may have been Eugenia who mentioned it, but where the little tiny and some bigger kind of touchstones or navigational elements that we may have had that just kind of are rote in the sense they're just part of we don't pay attention are have shifted and so when we go to touch something like that to go off of here it's like you know your hand misses or something mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what i meant about reference points exactly yeah. what you described well, and I think that too, be, so I mean, I experienced a bit of that too, where it's like, you know, you, you don't feel like there's anything wrong per se. You don't feel like, you know, you're not, it's not a, that's why I just said, meh, you know, blah. It's just, and it's, uh, so I've, and there's been a lot of, um, very be you know being very tired and so I recognize that you know for as an integration symptom within myself um so I just I, I have been in a spot of just hanging out and allowing whatever come to come and wash over and go it just you know when that was the only thing that I could think of for your questions BZ so you know yeah, well, I think That's it's a good one. perfect because a lot of people have different things to, do, you know, like that to different things. And they're like, you know, as, as Taz was giving the example, well, where something, somebody rearranged the house, well, somebody rearranged all my likes <laughs> or my dislikes. Wait a minute, I used to not like that. And now I do. What's the deal here? <laughs> well, you know, it was funny because about a month ago or so, I went to an Eagles concert. Okay, now that was my band, you know. And even though I know their songs are old, you know, like so to speak, when I was listening to them, I got the real sense that they were really like moving way, way back there, that they were really old songs and I didn't even know if I liked them anymore. Do you know what I mean? And that's the Eagles. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, but it, even when I was at the concert, which was fantastic, but I still had a sense that this was retreating somehow. That even when I was listening, I was retreating. That's how it, you know, words aren't always good to explain. That's how it was. No, I feel you on that, Noel. I had an uh, experience like that uh, last October on my birthday. I had, I, I used to be this huge ACDC fan. And um, there was a ACDC cover band that everybody raved about here locally. And, you know, <clears throat> my, uh, some friends of mine, my sister, they decided that this would be the best thing for me, you know, because I was newly separated and I love ACDC and I had the worst time. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I realized that yes, once upon a time I was quite the ACDC fan and I, I can still kick it on the radio when I can turn it down a little bit, but a live band and concert. <clears throat> Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was very, it was very Talking not probably to you a little bit. Well, it's frequency, isn't it? I mean, you know, it's all frequency. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. here's the, here's one of those things, you know, because I've been on about uh, following nudges lately. I, this was before I knew about nudges. 
really. Uh, Cause it was actually before our first conversation, BZ. And I had a nudge not to go and didn't really want to go. And everybody was like, Oh, you're all dressed. Just come on. We're all dressed. We're here. Let's go. You'll just get out. You'll have a good time. Oh <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> I allowed myself, I stepped over some boundaries I had set up for myself a while back. And so I, when I didn't have a good time, I really wasn't surprised, <laughs> but it was one of those things where, you know, I knew ahead of time that I wouldn't have a good time and I went anyway. Mm-hmm. So I, I can feel, I, I, I was con- just kind of saying that I feel what you were feeling a, a little bit of, you know? Uh, yeah. 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 This whole thing about music is very interesting. It, it first happened for me in my life back about, I'd say about 2005 when I was still married and my was wife, I, I always used to kind of like be the, you know, disc jockey, so to speak around the house on weekends and I would play music and, and everybody was happy. And then I went through these major changes where exactly what we're talking about happened. None of it, none of it resonated with me anymore. I mean, none of it. And I just stopped playing it and I started listening to um, different different music, soothing music, meditation music, uh-huh. curtain, and my was wife just went crazy. She's like, <laughs> aren't we ever going to listen to Tom Petty anymore? And I'm like, well, you can if you want, but I'm not really into it, you know? And, you know, so it all kind of happened at the same time. TV, everything, just, I just shut it Movies, off. Movies, probably. Oh, everything, everything. Yeah, it's just, I, it just didn't resonate in my field anymore. It just didn't work for me. It, it was like an old neighborhood that I just did not even want to go through anymore. You know? So I think it's a great way to say it. Yeah. I think it's completely natural. Yeah. You know what, what I have found recently in regards to that for myself, Talison, because I'm, I'm very musically inclined person. I I love being, being around music. I, I was a singer when I was younger and, um, it's like, I'm on whatever I, 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 I find myself being drawn to specific things and um, actually something that BC you posted on the IUV last week. Well, oh, that nails it down. <laughs> well, yeah, I know. <laughs> but it was the, it was, the, I, I think a lot of folks will remember it if they had seen it. And that was the Anya hidden water, oh, yeah. water, uh, that that actually that piece of music that entire thing is actually what <laughs> what initiated that entire experience for me so again for me being drawn to something and following nudges about things or seems very huge one mm-hmm. of the things i find on the uh, music or movie stuff i don't i don't have a television and occasionally well i don't actually occasionally interested in watching a movie but but someone will mention something and i don't want to watch through the whole movie or netflix thing or whatever so i'll google you know some rough thought of where this scene transpires and if i can get a rough estimate where it is then i can find it and i i put it on the computer and can be I could even be sitting and reading and it goes so it goes in slow motion so the audio is way down any video there for me is way down I'm not doing this this is just how it appears and then the book will get put down if it's reading a book or something or whatever and I stop it's like someone went you know tapped me on the shoulder and pointed at the computer and then the music comes up I go to regular speed video and I'm just at that moment and then it fades away again. So, so it was like that, that piece right there is there to see. It sounds like dream time. Kind of like dream time. But the very interesting thing is once that I've connected with that, I could go back and it doesn't do, it just is the low, you know, kind of blah, 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 just goes right on for it, which I think is very interesting. That, no, you got whatever there was there and move along. <laughs> yeah. I wish I had that. I don't have that yet, but I have been being drawn to specific things. And then sometimes I, 
uh, it's, it's, it won't be, I haven't, I have not gotten your knack for that. Uh, but I will find why I was drawn to it. Oh, that's it. That's the piece right there. That's right. <laughs> so, cool. Um, I wanted to move next to Gina. And one of the ones that you um, talked about was learning to listen to your higher self. So if you want to bring forward what you were um, feeling and working with there, that'd be great. Yeah. Is this the, um, the last one? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's interesting because uh, it goes a little bit with what um, Sheila was saying about the concert when she got the nudge that no, you wouldn't have, you know, fun. Um, but it, even if it's nudges about, um, you really want to do something. You think you want to do something and your higher self is saying no. Um, what I've found here lately is noticing all the times when people tell me no or when something gets in my way. I already knew it was going to happen. But I, instead of just listening to that and saying no to myself, I'll play it out. And what happens is if you want something, like if it's something you want it to be yes, um, you want to go do this or you want to go call somebody or you want to watch this movie or whatever, and you really want it to be yes for whatever reason, um, and you won't tell yourself no, then you'll ask somebody else for permission. And knowing that you're, at, and you're now taking outside of you and giving it to someone else, and because you felt that no, you're going to get a no back from that person. And then you're going to make it that person's fault. Be like, well, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that with me <laughs> versus, versus just telling yourself no. Right. And um, I noticed that when I don't tell myself no, I either one, get frustrated, get aggravated with somebody else um, because of it, um, get depressed because it didn't work out the way I wanted it to, you know. And then if I said with it, it was like, well, I tried to tell you that my higher self says before you did it, but you didn't listen. Mm -hmm. um, so trying to just slow down follow those nudges because what happens is when I get the no and I really want it to be yes or it should be yes <laughs> yeah. you know it's like why am I feeling no but I should be feeling yes you know it then you know I would turn to myself and go what am I thinking or why am I is something wrong with me because I'm feeling no um uh, but it I really should be feeling yes to this um is just trusting that you know, starting to trust it. And sometimes you'll see if it's no, and it's going to impact somebody else. Um, I'll like, if we've scheduled to do something, um, and there's other beings involved and I get the no, um, and I go ahead and do it anyway, then it's not as good as what it could be or, or it gets cumbersome. But what I found is if I get that no, and it, even if it involves other people and I'd say, you know what, I don't think this or this or this other people in that group say, you know what, I'm glad you said that because I'm feeling, you know, we can't, maybe we should reschedule it for some other time or, you know, it, it always seems to manifest. The universe takes care of it if I'll trust it. But if the, if I don't tell myself no, and I go forward, then I'm pulling them into it too, because you know, I'm, I maybe was the one that was getting the message, not today. You know? And that's where that comes from. And it can go from work to friends to, you know, just what you want to eat that day to anything. And I'm just, that lesson has come up over and over and over again for me for the last couple of weeks. And with the listening or, or the not listening, does mm -hmm. that uh, show up in ways with more things to integrate on the not listening part? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it's usually around courage or around, you know, some value, you know, where I thought maybe I was. And then all of a sudden I go, wow, I really wasn't. I still missed some there. But yeah, there's always a, a lesson in that in some way for me. Yes. Very interesting. I, I, I would totally get what you're saying. And I've had multiple experiences of similar things. And uh, my language is probably going to be different. But um I would say that what happens is that we we actually know we're that powerful of creator beings that we know what's true for us. We know it's in our intuitive abilities and 
so I, I call it my first hit when I ask, you know, so, uh, faced with a question or decision and I get an answer, it's the first hit. It's always the valid, true response. And it's the ego I found that jumps in and says, no, no, you don't want, you, you need to do that. You deserve this or, or something else and wants to change it. And I, I, I see it as a form of self-sabotage where we sabotage what we know already to be true. If we were to just go with it, we would save ourselves so much turmoil. And, and I, I too have been really shifting that experience and just going with my first hit and it saves me so much anguish and, and <laughs> uncomfortableness um and it's just like wow it, why life is so much easier it's like i see it as um is really part of being in the flow so to speak yeah st stepping into the magic of life um when i do that when i listen to my intuitive hit the very first answer that comes magic just seems to happen bing bing and it's like wow look at that look at that it's so i i that's what i would add to what gina said yeah it amazingly unfolds if you get out of the way <laughs> <laughs> yeah well another thing too that's um and this is different you know kind of it'll arrive differently for everybody, but we've already been talking a lot about the expansion and the shifts and the changes that are going within us. Um, and uh, one way I would I would say it is that the because the 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 various collectives have expanded enough right now um, to move out of the slow off the slow train and onto the fast expansion train that uh, more and more people are seeing um, that what they're th thinking about that what they want to do is more their whole their whole being is choosing and not just strictly you know the one in the t-shirt is choosing mm -hmm. and and that's kind of what Talison was describing too where is that first hit and even sometimes we get the first hit but we we uh, from oftentimes old habit argue with it not because it's one or the other but it's almost like it's an old maybe a higher self self hit instead of the expanded being that we are now and the and the stage and field that we're playing on right this moment mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense so the the little wants <laughs> <laughs> you know and they're just they're not what we signed up for i mean we played and we did that thing and that's cool and 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 now um you know there's so much coming on it actually is, i laughed it makes me think of when noelle had said to you sheila well maybe are you bored and i knew she was gonna go no but but actually part of me said well yeah kind of because she's getting back on the par of, you know, the expansion level that, that you have been playing on here to four, except for this lifetime, right? And so again, that's another one of those juxtapositions of, you know, we used to like, we didn't like, you know, so we're, we're, we're the best way, you know, is that we're just shucking off all of the, the, the linear stuff. And, and I can imagine that, let's just say those, and this is not being judgmental, but let's just say those that aren't awoke yet or whatever, that maybe are feeling these energies and they're doing a lot of shopping. <laughs> I mean, that's what it seems like they'd be doing, you know, with these energies, not knowing quite this or that. Well, they'll go shopping. See what I mean? Right. Or they'll cope in some way, numb, you know, numb it, soothe it. Soothe yeah, it, there you go. It is, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, shopping is, just, you know, off the top of my head, but numb it some way. And when it's, I'm so glad we're able to have a conversation about it and see where this really is, and it's just fine. Yeah. Well, it's, it's all good. There's, there's nothing broken. <laughs> uh -uh. On That's any broken. level, on anything, whether it's a... a it's uh, impossible to be broken. Structure, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. We're, yes, indeed. We're just seeing for the first time, maybe, you know, what's really been there all along. Yeah. Oh, yeah.
Well, and something Talison said too, related kind of to this uh, also was the easy part because what came up for me this past week in it was, okay, if it's that easy, then something must be wrong. You know, it's a program that we have that everything yeah. has to be difficult or we have to put effort in it or we have to think a lot about it. Or if you're not thinking about it, you know, you're not making the right choice and stuff. And, yeah. and so I think it plays in there of, you know, if it, if you get those nudges and you follow it, it's, it is easy. And at the same time, the self-sabotage piece is, well, if it's that easy, how do we know it's right? You know, or how do you know you're not mistaking something? So. Good point, Gina. And it's just like when you say, if you get that nudge, how about you get the nudge to do nothing? Right. That's yeah. okay too. Yeah. You know, cause I got nudges to do nothing a lot recently and I guess I'm all right with it. Yeah. Because I'm just like, all right, I guess I want But it's not that. nothing. Huh? It's not nothing. It's not nothing, yeah. It's, it's, it's being <laughs> instead of doing. <laughs> it's, the, well, it's the judgment of the nothing. The judgment of an old, it's an old program. Oh, yeah. yeah. All, all of this that we're talking about, there's so many opportunities that arise to question our core beliefs our core beliefs that may be obsolete and not true, but we've been carrying them around for who knows how long. And it's, it's really a good time to be looking at those stuff. And when these kind of uncomfortable moments come up, I always go, Oh, there's another one. It's an opportunity. Let's look at that. Where did I, where did I adopt that one at, you know, and then bring it into the moment of now and, and mature it. In other words, bring it up to speed if needed or throw it away and start again, whatever is appropriate for that belief but it's just it's coming up for everybody i see it all around me with people yeah and the other thing uh that i see along with that that coming up and we look at these different things is um the speed at which mm. we flow and manifest materialize things is incredibly rapid yeah, which can be an incredibly good thing, or if we're, we're lazy and sloppy with what's going on, you know. Oops! Oh yeah, I did. I did actually say that I wanted that tiger to bite my toe. Yeah, I remember that two minutes ago. <laughs> you know, or that thing to fall down and crash on the ground, or whatever it is. Um, and so we we're in that flow. Um, one of the things that I find myself doing a lot lately with these different things is just observing me being in the moment with whatever's going on so that I get the broader perspective. It's almost like I'm having, well, it's me and my soul having a conversation because it's actually my soul looking at all of this and going, okay, well, see now, like we're like, um, like a life review in this section of life, except this section of life is unfolding, quote unquote, right this minute. Mm -hmm. It's a multidimensional view screen of all of it. And so, and Sheila, in, in your bleh thing, you know, I can go, I can feel and watch myself being in the bleh and then part of me saying, you know, Noelle, you were talking about, well, do nothing. And I'm thinking, well, Shouldn't I be doing something, you know, all, in a nanosecond, all of these different, you know, it's like a Rubik's cube of, and there's a video screen and all the different Rubik's cubes thing. And I go, well, I accomplished a lot in that view of all that kind of stuff. Good. Okay. Next. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, I like your oops. <laughs> oops. Yeah. I, you know, we, they're <coughs> interesting how, what Gina just brought up there and actually for me in, in feeling into that and pulling it over into some of my experiences with this during that, during part of that BZ, like you said, well, aren't I supposed to be doing something, you know, because just the day before I had a whole set of instructions going on that I was supposed to be doing some writing and, uh, so uh, I tried to force myself to sit down and do some writing and uh, I, t I typed, is this an intellectual exercise? 
only it wasn't an X or size. I typed O R X or size, and that's when I, oh, okay. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Time, time to put it down and just let the mat slide over and 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 integrate or whatever it is so that I'm uh, you know that I think that was the higher self saying it's time to take a little bit of a back seat and just let 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 the chips fall where they may so thank you for that too Gina boy you just been loaded up with stuff for me <laughs> evening, girl <laughs> and and you can do this. I heard a couple of people just ask right now, well, yeah, but if I'm at work and I'm feeling meh, well, what am I supposed to do to my boss? Meh. Um, <laughs> I suggest and I submit that there's a whole crap ton of people at their job going meh. Yeah. All right. the time. <laughs> well, and just is there, is there a piece of what you're doing that you can gravitate to for the stage of it and and um and the kind of how we're taking different things the like you're not like all the th actually all of the things that we've talked about so far um they're all in in that area and we can navigate simply by realizing what it is because if we realize what it is then that lets a lot of the judgment or frustration or the you know the rubbing against disappear and we realize oh it's you know it's it's not the size of of uh you know mount everest it's you know just mount hood you know <laughs> and i think what talison said too was um when you put it in an observant mode it takes it away from you're observing it you can deal with it on that level and then let it go or do something about it or whatever but you're observing it rather than like owning it well yeah because i know i have i always have a tendency to judge myself in every little thing i do and so for this particular uh go round, i really did i got the feeling to just allow all of it to you know that's why i'm i'm, I'm really grateful for all of this conversation actually because it all ties into all of that for me and it's uh and knowing for, for, for me in particular, I guess, I'm, I'm sure there are a lot of folks that feel this way, like BZ, you were just saying, knowing when you have, when you're looking at something like that, that, oh, okay, well, that's kind of what that is. That's why I think I threw in the perception of integration. That's a whole lot better or easier for me to, oh, this is integration. Okay, I can handle this. I'm... This is easy peasy, so to speak, but it's just a weird, that's why I liked what you said, Gina, about uh, having all of this newness and not something, I, I, w I would imagine, especially with someone who tries to rationalize everything, you hit that very beautifully, Noelle, when you were saying, you know, rational mind kind of goes, uh, wait a minute. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, well, yeah. and the void is uncomfortable. Yeah. All the way around. And um, so that's, I think it goes back to the, the Talison saying, you know, our, our guide posts and footing and, uh, um, you know, that's what's being taken away is that frame that we've been, you know, the cell wall, so to speak. Um, and therefore there's lots of void, there's open space, so to speak out there. And it's, it can be disorienting and, and, um, and then even what also came up for me, Sheila, was even when you were saying integration, it's like you, you tell, you were saying to yourself, well, I'm integrating, meaning I'm, I'm making progress. I'm doing something. <laughs> this is positive, you know, this sitting in it. So it's the void that, you know, we get uncomfortable with, and I'm speaking about me too. Um, we start to judge it or we try to fill it with something else. And right. yeah. All, all of these opportunities that we're sharing, I, I see a very close connection to trust. Mm -hmm. In other words, we need, we're, we're teaching ourselves how to trust our own abilities more and more and more. And um, yeah, everything, ties back into that the way I'm looking at it anyway. 
Yeah, I like I like what you just said there, Talison, because um, at trust has always been a really big issue for me personally. And um, so, I mean, I being comfortable, I, and also, of course, comparing oneself to where where I am and where I perceive others along their particular path. Well, why am I not? <laughs> Why am I not doing that, right? So that, so then that that for me again came back comes back to trust. And so what I have been in regards to that recently is okay. Well, I'm just going to trust that when it's time, it'll be there. There you go. Which exactly. Is, exactly. That's new for me too, but I'm just going to trust that this is unfolding in exactly the way it needs to, and for me the way I designed it originally. So I'm just going to go with that. Yeah. And, and I look at it for myself is that I'm only uh, waking up as quickly as I can. That's right for me. And my soul knows that, uh, gee, I do it any faster. I could burn out, you know, or, <laughs> you know, or any slower, I wouldn't know what was going on. So I'm at the right place. Cause you know, we're, yeah, I'm at the right place for me. I don't, that's all I can say. About me. So uh, the trust is very big. So that that uh, that lit up um, Noelle's <laughs> email because <laughs> so, it's this is big trust for her. So do you want to just jump in with it, or do you want me to read what you wrote? Why don't you read what I said and and let let it be discussed? Okay. All right. Um, I know this sounds crazy, but I think I had a download a few weeks ago. I was sitting on my balcony and it was sunny and I was meditating. I saw with my eyes closed what looked like a small, thin, square object come from the direction of the sun. It was aimed at my forehead as it got closer. I could see tons of geometric symbols within it. It disappeared into my head. I've not told anyone else this, as I know it sounds strange, but that is what happened. And now it's up on the internet and it's on YouTube, so everybody knows that Noelle had a download. Because <laughs> that's what it was. Yes. Sure. Really busy, Talison? Yeah, you're honoring, the, you're, by trusting, you're honoring what's coming to you, yes. Okay, great, because it was like, I was sitting there and I was just like, I saw that, I saw that, I felt that. And I was like, in gratitude. Yeah, well, but I didn't know what all the, it meant. I didn't know what was getting downloaded, but I trusted that it certainly wasn't, you know, the, the number to the, the safe down at the bank or something, you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, you know, I felt like it was on the up and up, you know? So thank you, BZ, for reading that because I could never tell. I can't go out to lunch with a friend of any friends of mine and say, guess what? I <laughs> oh man, they wouldn't even get it. They in fact they'd probably pay for my lunch and escort me out the door. Well, you're having dinner, pre-dinner with all of us and, and yes. sharing with everybody. <laughs> One thing I will say, because you um, because you went with the nudge which is what it was to send the, that email that way, right? Yeah. And to share it and to, and to knock on the door. Because remember I told you, you, you know, everybody had gotten rearranged and you were supposed to be put in that seat. Instead yeah. Of the other, right, okay. So what you'll see now, you've, um, you can look at it as a way that you, this is part of, um, even if you were punching buttons in your computer to, to unzip a file, you, this whole process starting at 2.21 West Coast time, and then the reply, actually the 5.02 West Coast time, which is when you wrote that, you actually have started the unzipping sequence in full... Wow. Does that make sense in full? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's be, because I because I oh, opened to it and, and explored it here. 
Oh, that's good. What I'd like to add to that is is how I would how I see it is Noel, I, I've known you now long enough to know that you've really we all going through these massive changes and you have been no exception. So uh -huh. so your our, our imagination imagination and our intuitive abilities I see is absolutely key to being able to actually see something when it shows up. Yeah. If we've never imagined it, if we've never been able to visualize it in our mind's eye, it can show right up outside your door and you won't see it. Uh-huh. So this download that you described, I would suggest, I'm not saying I know, I'm suggesting that this is what happened. You've, you've known that you've been getting information coming from the source, so to speak. Mm -hmm. and so this is how you, you actually saw it coming this time, which is really cool. <laughs> it was really cool. Yeah. And it, it went right in here. <laughs> You're right. Your third eye. Yeah. Yeah. So no, anyway, I, it was pretty wild. And I'm, they say the veil is really, really thinning. Non-existent. Non-existent? Yeah, can, probably. You there, well, you can, it is non-existent. It's us being able to shed our own stuff to see it. I get that. But uh, I'm just so blessed that I'm on the planet at this time. Yeah. With all of you beautiful people and everyone else. It's just like, wow. What, what a nice synchronicity through the... I bet you we all waited a zillion of years to come flying through all this to be right here right now. Yes, a standing uh, room only. Standing room only. Get right in, uh, in on the planet now. Yep. Well, I'd like to ask you a question, Noel, if I could, because I'm beckoned to ask you a question in regards to your download. <laughs> yes. <laughs> did you, did you happen to follow a nudge to meditate on the porch that day, or at that time, or whatever? The last, when I was doing that, I had, uh, it been rather sunny uh, in the last couple of weeks and my cat's out there. And so to join my cat, uh, I sat on the, on the chair, you know, and just sat back and was meditating. So it, it kind of feels as though, although you are, are, are saying kind of suggesting maybe not but it feels as though it was a nudge that you followed um, to to sit on the porch particularly to meditate I guess what I'm getting at here is because what I'm finding a lot of for my own self recently is trusting the following of a nudge is part of the first domino kickover ah you, for me anyway that my soul says oh okay hold up she's paying attention let's let's do something more yeah see if and so for for me what i've noticed a lot lately is it's like following nudges is for me seems like a signal to myself in some way uh, that oh okay I'm gonna trust myself to follow tr enough that regardless if I don't even if I don't understand it why I'm being nudged to do this like <laughs> one day last week I was nudged to eat nothing but olives all day. <laughs> Is it doesn't that got, that has copper in it I think. I'm not sure why but I went with it. Because that was the nudge, and that's what I felt to do. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I felt really great, and I, I think by the end of it, I figured out why there was a particular reason. There was, There is, like you said, obviously something in the olives, but it also caused me to be very thirsty. Mm -hmm. And I drank a lot of water, and I felt really great. And so, but it leads, I what I'm finding for myself is, following trusting myself enough to follow a nudge no matter how stupid it might seem to <laughs> me, mm -hmm. is knocking yep. over dominoes and setting yeah okay uh events in motion 
Mm-hmm. So to speak. And so that's why I asked that question because I had a feeling you were following a nudge to meditate at that particular time, that particular, you know, and I just wondered if that was something that you were consciously aware of. Sometimes I find myself doing things that I, I think I'm not consciously aware of, but then later on further, uh, I was like, Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. That was something that I wasn't paying attention to, but it was like, uh, you know, like, like I say, way back here as, in, as opposed to right up here. Yeah. Noelle, too, you, the way you described that when Sheila asked you, it, it felt like your cat invited you out there. My cat is something else. Well, yes, an Octurian, I'm sure. So, and, and since it came, you know, the way you described it, that, you know, that may be part of a, it a connection. Flew. It flew around, the, like from the sun and around the tree. And <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I remember that week particularly, um, it was rather clear here and in the sky, and I remember being open, just feeling in a strange way, just kind of open, and I was very peaceful, because I probably was on the balcony several times that week, it was so peaceful. And then um, I'm so glad I was able to bring that up tonight, because, um, you know, I'm just real excited about uh, opening up some more and, and just letting things be. I think. What's your cat's name? Well, she knocked on my door two years ago and they called her mama, but she didn't want to be where she was. She wanted to be with me. So I call her little Bibby. Little Bibby. Little well, Bibby. I, I think little Bibby and you have some conversating to do. So I think so too. <laughs> she's teaching me, I'll tell you. And I, uh, she's been a very interesting cat for me for two years now. She's going to be with me for as long as she wants to. <laughs> but uh, little Bibby is um, been a real, real insight for me. Cool. Well, so well, that's a, a perfect segue to what Talison brought up. <laughs> I, I like how these all work together. Um, so uh, Talison's asking us about uh, ETs and uh, disclosure. So why don't you go ahead and tell us what you're feeling into on that, and we'll play with it. Well, I see a huge presence already here on the planet of ETs. And I feel a huge presence of spaceships that are in our local solar system. Um, I know they're here to assist in the universal awakening of humanity and all of the beings that are involved. Um, so I, I just feel like for me um, and my experience that I've been kind of waiting lifetimes for this to happen. And ever since I was a child in this particular lifetime, um, I've I've been looking to the skies and looking to the stars and having communication with other beings. It's just, I mean, as a child, I was told I was crazy and you, who are you talking about? And you, you don't talk that way. They're going to put you in a nut house, you know. So I learned how to play that silly game and cover it up and and be normal. Yeah. Uh, and um, so obviously, I've gotten away with it. And now I'm, I'm just, I'm just out there and, and I know that they're here to help us. And my, my concern is, you know, like, like everything else that's coming out into the open, there's nothing that's going to be hidden anymore. Thank goodness. Yeah. All of the lies that have been perpetrated are coming out and being exposed finally. And um, I see the ETs as one of those things that has been hidden and lied, a big lie for us. Um, so this is going to be another one of those subjects that has the potential to shock people into who knows what. And I see my role as, as a, I don't know, first responder uh, to help people cope with what is happening. Um, and I just see the ET presence as something that's going to be a, a deal maker for all of us on this planet and many other planets. But at the same time, it could be the point where people really just, oh, my God, I can't accept this, you know. 
So I just wanted, you know, it's a conversation piece. I, I want to hear if anybody has anything to say, what, what you're seeing, what you're feeling. I do. Real quick, do you think, this is a question, do you think in order to see ETs you have to be of a certain vibration or is anybody vibrating at a very low vibration going to be able to see ETs? Well, how I would answer that is I think it's very much tied into what I said earlier about your imagination and your intuitive, intuitive abilities. Um, if you can believe in it, I mean, if you do believe in it, that there are, you know, ETs, I mean, it's, there's so much history. I don't know how anybody can deny it, but um, people do. Um, so I'm just saying that if you, you know, it's there, you accept it. And, you know, they know that you're not going to freak out and have a heart attack and roll over dead. Um, that they're going to show themselves to you. And so it would be of a lot of a higher vibration. Then most people yes. who are going to view these are going to be of a higher vibration. If that would be my view. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Yeah. 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 Plus this is coming up and I'll throw it out there for whatever reason. So for the past six, eight months, I've been, we've been paying attention to insects and bugs and frogs and the things, snakes, things that some of, not frogs, but insects and like spiders and things like that, things that normally you would like smash or shoo away. And it's like, instead of doing that, it's just going, just letting it be. Yeah. And yeah. you know, saying, what is it you're here to communicate? Because how do we know that those things aren't tests, you know, aren't to get us used to, we only, they're only going to hurt us if we, given permission to hurt us you know so it's like how do we start to interact with these beings that are here around us and the more comfortable we can get with the ugliest of bugs you know or the most beautiful butterfly um you know i think is preparation for when we see these beings that are going to be so different than us if we freak out because a spider gets on our leg how in the world are we going to be able to handle some being that's going to, you know, just blow our minds is something we've never seen before. So, and I mean, I'm sure we don't look like they might think we should look either. Well, the, you know, you can look at um, Star Trek mm -hmm. or any of these other different videos, and, and that's a really good indication of just a very tiny, 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 tiny amount of, of you know, range of what's going on. Um, and there's non-locals that are making themselves much more visible all the time. All, I mean, all over the place. You know, there's. Would so you many, explain that, BZ? Well, you know, you, you re reference a non-local is someone who's not localized to this planet. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. So right here on the planet, you can go places, you can look at things, and you know, I can see them that they're non-locals. I was, I know this sounds a little strange, but it was a couple years ago and I was coming down an elevator at Macy's and then there's that elevator that's going up and I saw somebody on that side and I turned and looked and that person, I looked right at that person, it was a guy and I feel like he was a, um, you know, lizard. I could tell he was a lizard and he looked at me like, I know you know. And it was just a communication real quick that went on that I, I just kept going, but uh, he knew I knew and I knew he knew I knew. Is that the right word, lizard? Yeah. It, it well, could, could that's, a that's a description of one, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's I could see it. I could all see the, it. All the different civilizations, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, so there's... there's very benevolent um, species and, and uh, groups, and they're very non-benevolent. Yeah. And there, there are a, a vast array that are, you know, in some instances benevolent or meh, you know. <laughs> so it's a whole range of, you know, uh, things. Um, and when I'm getting some thoughts that I know are not mine and they're not particularly very nice thoughts, I know they're not mine. And I say, uh, whoever's in my field that uh, is not belonging, it's very rude for you to be here uninvited. And I'm commanding you to leave now. And then I, I can feel it. It's gone. In fact, they get kind of embarrassed. <laughs> cool. That's very cool. 
So, Gina, have you done that too? Yeah, well, I do that. I have done that for years without really knowing really why. It was just something that I picked up somewhere along my life. But yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a protection. And, you know, it made me think when you say it, said that about um, I, the feeling I get is that they'll communicate and interact more frequently or um, work together with is what comes up us if we get clear on our own sovereignty. Yes. You know, and there you go. And we have to have that sovereignty, which you were just expressing there, which is, you know, this is me. I didn't give you permission, you know, um, and, and then I mean, that's not just the only way to do sovereignty, but it's that being responsible and mm -hmm. caretaking of your own being, then they're going to be more likely to interact. If we're reaching out from need or want or fear or any of those other things, um, we're not going to be interacting. Mm -hmm. It's a vibration, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And also, uh, Noelle, I think sometimes, you know, if, if you're peeking in a shop window, we'll say, so that it's not somebody's window and you're not a, a peeping Noelle, right? You're peeping in, <laughs> peeking in a shop and you're looking what's in the window, right? Um, and so heretofore, they've been peeking in the shop, the overall view of Noelle. Mm -hmm. But Noelle hasn't really been listening to all her nudges and paying attention. And now all of a sudden, Noelle said, excuse me. They're like, Oh, whoops, call yay! The world's big. I think so too. They felt real bad about it. They felt embarrassed yeah. and they exited. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. So yeah. oftentimes that's a that's a that's a um a situation that, that you know you, you hadn't been noticing and now they they're sorry and they didn't get the you know they didn't follow their nudge. Um <clears throat> she knows that you're Yes, she knows that it's like a bully on the playground. <laughs> At some point you say, you know, I'm not going to take this anymore. And, you know. Right. Yeah. But and That's also, play. It, yeah, it can be a negative thing. It can also be purely, you know, um, no malintent whatsoever. And, um, you know, they got caught looking in and, and you're waking up and said, no, when I invite you, we'll we'll play. Exactly, I'll invite you for tea sometime, but not yeah. not now. Yeah. But well, it's interesting. I, I I see that this conversation and, and what you're sharing, Noel. I, I you know the benevolent benevolent and um, malevolent beings on this planet, human or not, um, the ETs are also fall into that same classification, and the malevolent ones that try to control or put thoughts into our mind to control us or manipulate us in some way, shape or form are definitely there in my experience. And so it's really important to use that discerning ability mechanism that we do have if we just turn it on and acknowledge it to discern what is benevolent and what is not. And so I think it's really important to, to, to do that. And, uh, it, what what comes with that is um, um, a responsibility to ourselves for our growth, and it requires, of course, living from your heart. So so that's I see as really important sequences for us as human beings. Yeah, and and also just like with everything else, the non judgment. So so. Uh, when you, when each individual being gets comfortable with their own boundaries, their own sovereignty, their own power, and that they That's can it. invite to play, right? Um, instead of thinking, you know, that's a more human type of thing. Okay, well, that's in the bad columns. So we're going to hang a sign, no bad right, uh -huh. dudes over here and only good dudes over here, right? Kind of thing. Um, Except that there's a there's a, a coming together and a holding of all of this, mm -hmm. and if you're clear here in you, and you say, well, you know, um, I can feel you looking in, or if there's a conversation and you want to connect, I can also feel that, you know, I might label you as malevolent or you know a little sketchy or something like that. But I'm curious, you know, I know who I am. I've got this going on, mm -hmm. but I would like, you know, I, I, I don't want you coming over for dinner, but I'd like to, Hey, there's an outdoor cafe. Let's go have, you know, 
a, a biscotti and and chat for a little bit kind of a thing mm-hmm. because with everything expanding and it's not just humans and it's not just on this planet right right um, a lot of beings that you could have you know maybe classified them in the way i just described a moment ago are expanding and they want to have expansion as well sure and so they're moving through different steps to do that and if they're trying to make a connection and someone keeps hanging a you know a bad side oh good point yeah i'm all good about uh you know if you want to be you know friends and and all that i'm good for that you know um but i'm not going to go down to that negative yeah. level oh. you can come up with me yeah or or even just respecting where or each other is here. right at that moment and and you know i'm not taking you home with me i'm just chatting <laughs> for a moment cool yeah and i think disclosure um you know you, know, you wanted to m- touch on that on too so maybe if we just wrap up with this part of it um if anybody has any thoughts on how they're feeling into um what for them is disclosure or how they might see it unfolding Well, I, w- I wanted to add something to the, the whole uh, conversation in regards to um, our fam- our star family and what you just said there, BT, because this kind of plays into this for me with that whole thing I've integrated in that part of what I feel I experienced was a multidimensional um integration of something that has i mean because you know i i have long suspected that what we perceived as past lives or whatever actually now i i'm really feeling are sort of simultaneous in a way because we are so unlimited and so much more yeah we are source we we are source and yet individual unique portions of that same and therefore all of the beings on the outside of me are also actually me and so all of them regardless of their past present or current situation are again part of me and so like when i was presented with this it was a being that was not human, is not human, is not benevolent, was not benevolent. I'm not sure how to describe it. Um, but I was also very clear it was me. It was a portion of me that presented itself to me a few m- nights prior, trying to invite me or entice me into fear. And instead, recognizing it and saying, well, in the grandest, most expanded sense, expanded sense, you are me. So no, I'm not going to um, accept your invitation to go into fear. I love you. You are a part of me. And, you know, this, was, this went on for a bit. Regard, I mean, I refuse to be afraid. And so I really feel that whether that being was me or not me at any whether no matter what i was presented with something outside of myself that seemed very foreign and therefore not you know of me not terrestrial certainly nothing i've ever seen on this planet so it could be extraterrestrial whatever it, it was or is you know through this and and so how I don't know. There's a for for me. There's a part of this conversation that beckons that portion for me. That whatever we may, any of us, be on our paths presented with, yeah. There's very, very, very doubtful. It's going to look just like anything we've come across. So, how, being open to all of that because of the whole idea. 
that I mean, I, I've always, I've also often wondered, are we all one or are we not? I mean, we, we are individual, yes, and I, I get that. But um, if the energetics are changing, if the polarities really are changing, which I feel they are, I mean, I, I've seen instances of this. So you're 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 speaking in regards to hanging a label on something. I mean, we're seeing that right now play out in front of us in this huge way where these labels are being hung on something and folks are getting hung up on a specific label rather than actions that are actually being taken and, you know, how all of that. I mean, I think it's a really huge metaphor in that. Um, and you're right, Talis, and I think that all of that disclosure is going to come out, but it's important for us to deal with ourselves in a manner to be, to be ready for it. And I think the same, same thing is that it's cause I got a feeling that we are the galactics folks. Uh, sorry. I hate to break it to you, but this, is a, this is a multidimensional gig going on here. And we are going to find out. I got a feeling that uh, we are so much more than the little tiny human sitting in this. Oh room. yeah, that's a given. That's part of the big reveal that's that's yeah. coming. You know, absolute yeah. daily reveal is not just this document or this or that or the other thing. It's yeah. And, and when, <laughs> when, <laughs> when, with disclosure, I think it's already been disclosure. I think I think if you asked anybody on the street, they're going to say. If you, if you stood on the corner and said, do you think that ETs are here? Or that they go, yeah, and they keep on walking. I well, think they already know. What if, I, what if I was to suggest to you, Noel, that quite possibly the reason that you knew that that person that you felt was a lizard knew that you knew was because you yourself are a lizard. That's, that's exactly what I thought. Yeah, see, so that's exactly that's what, what I thought. And that's what we all might need to really start thinking about, in my view. And and so that puts a whole new spin on when you look at the metaphor that's being played out in 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 the physical 3D with racism and all of that sort of thing as well. I came home and looked in my green eyes for a long time. <laughs> well, and, you know, and it's, you talked about too, uh, the, Sheila, is, it's judgment. And again, everything's metaphor, walking away. So walking away from judgment. What I love part of, it's one of the reasons I actually put a few things up on the, <laughs> on the IUV lately about the walk away is because more and more people now, instead of terming it walking away from the Democratic Party, they're terming it walking away from the judgment, from the hate, which is nice that that evolution is coming because there are two parties and that's becoming more and more evident for people who it wasn't evident, you know, even 10 months ago. Um, so yeah, it's so all of this is, it's all metaphor and it's all unfolding right this moment. And there's so much more, um, Sublime deliciousness to we are the ones we've been waiting for on oh so many levels and layers. <laughs> I mean, I, I you know, I, 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 there's a part of me that feels like you just never know, man. I'm so open to the things being different and, you know, hashtag all becomes transparent now. Uh, as as we continue, I, I feel to trust ourselves, trust our nudges, continue just moving towards what what we've all been doing for ourselves, and that uh, changing form right in in front of someone and be showing that you are the galactics. That you just never know, man. That might be happening soon. You just never know. Well, you know, this, this, I love this conversation. I just want to say that personally, I, I mean, I'm, I'm glad, glad it shifted to where we're at right now because, you know, I'll, I'll just say this. I mean, I feel personally that I've had ET blood my whole life, and, and I don't know what it is. Um, but because I had the knowledge as a child looking up into the sky and going, why did you leave me here? 
you know, why did you leave me here? When are you coming back for me? <laughs> and that's what I would say. And my, my siblings would say, oh, my God, he's nuts. Our little brother is nuts, you know. But um, I'm saying that, and I feel like totally know it's true. Um, and, yes, this whole recognition, like, like Noel was saying, it's happening. It's happening. We're recognizing our own. So it's so cool. Disclosure, I, I think soft disclosure, yes, has already happened. I yeah. Think that President Trump's um, so-called deep uh, space force that he's come out with is exactly that. He, he knows that we have back-engineered spacecraft. We have, you know, what is it, $21 trillion that's missing so-called from – the Pentagon, where did that money go? It's pretty obvious to me, I think, and a lot of other people where it went. And so it's going to be kind of like a, a look, look what we've got, you know, that's going to be kind of, I see it like, you know, here's the new models for the next year, like, you know, they do with cars and automobiles. That's how I see it happening. Um, I don't think that can happen before they bring out some technology to help people with their health, though. Well, I think the technology is being used already secretly, um, and I wouldn't be surprised if this technology isn't used on our, our border situation that's coming. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it hasn't already been used um, in multiple places around the world. I won't go into a long story, but I, I, I see it's already happening. I mean, that's my viewpoint. I, I actually have an... Uh a feeling that uh, there are certain technologies that are being used now yeah. that we just aren't aware of. Um, for instance, you know, you've, uh, you hear a lot about the healing beds, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, remember we are multidimensional beings. And there's also something called spooky action at a distance. Now, I know that uh, my body has been changing in some ways that uh, are very dramatic and quite different. And so I and I have had lots of different kinds of experiences. And recently here, um, I made a statement in regards to I'm ready for these med medical beds, you know, to to be to be in use. And a very intuitive friend of mine said, "What makes you think you're not already in one?" There you go. Right. Yeah. What makes you think that you're not already in one? See, we have to expand the way we think too in regards to what we actually have going on here. I don't think we're in 3D anymore. No. No. And it, no, we're not. And it's the trusting of what, you know, as, as no, Noelle had said, well, so do you think that was a download? Well, you already knew the answer to that. You knew the answer to that when it happened. You knew the answer. Oh, yeah. When you walked out on the deck to, you know, to sit with the cat to meditate, right? <laughs> you know, so it's that trusting yeah. and, and knowing and owning it in. Um, and, and, you know, basically opening our hearts and it's the flow. Stop hiding, you know. We're all beautiful, amazing beings. Yeah, we're, we don't have to hide anymore. What, whatever shape, yeah. whatever color, whatever, you know, part in the galaxy, multiverses we come from and all of that. And, and that's, you know, what's unfolding, which is really, really cool. All right. Well, does anybody have any final thoughts they want to share before we round up tonight? I'd just like to add something on the very end of what you just said there, BZ, because apparently from all the puzzle pieces I've collected just in the last two days, uh, a lot of folks, you know, that tune into their selves and write different articles, some of which are on the IUV right now. Um, it's, it's, it would be a good idea for all of us to become comfortable with who we are because our multidimensionality will begin to show, iridescently so, apparently. I mean, there's lots of folks that are saying that as we relax into what's happening for ourselves, 
that light is going to be shining through in ways that are very unmistakable and very visual. And so the, the multi dimensionality portions, the, the differences in the way um, we see each other visually as well as feel each other are, are changing in ways that are just fantastically delicious. Yeah, it's already it's already happening for for what you might say out there out there, but it's also happening when you look at yourself at different moments in time, depending on what you've been doing. You know, if you if you catch a glimpse, you go, oh, look at that. You know, so yeah, all all of that's so it's it's not coming; it's here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and like um, to play off that a little bit too. Um, from what Sheila said is the more we do that and what we've talked about earlier, uh, Noel seeing the guy on the elevator and us feeling different about music. I mean, all of that's disclosure, right? So all of it is visually being able and sensory being able to read what's different now versus um, what was there. And so to me, disclosure happens when we can all of a sudden look up on something and we actually see it for what, the the next dimension of it is it's not necessarily somebody dropping you know a lot of news on the market it's going to be you right. know it's going to be downloads that we get and then we can walk through the world and we're going like oh you know yeah i see that that's not the way it used to be and so it's already happening it's we're in the midst of it right now and yep. and um, and the more we you know, find our light, we're going to shine differently. Like Sheila said, other people are going to start to recognize us differently as they start to get those downloads and, and, and gives them permission, so to speak. Yeah. Not, per, they, not that they need permission, but I mean, gives them the feeling of, Oh, that's the way. You yeah, know. Some way to see other people. Yeah. Something. And so there might be some who are, you know, they don't, they doubt themselves so much until they see something that says, oh, oh, you know, and then they'll lean into it more. And the other piece that kind of came up for me was the malevolent, benevolent piece. It's all judgment is always a matter of perspective. I mean, if you look at what's happening out there right now and all of the metaphors we see, you see the same situation and two different people can see it as malevolent one sees it as malevolent and the other one sees it as benevolent and it's the exact same instance and when i think about the galactics and i was talking about the bugs and spiders earlier i bet the spiders and bugs thinks we're we're malevolent you know when they see scary because we're going to squish them or you know so it's all a matter of perspective so judgment piece is kind of stepping back from that and just saying well let me just see what is and Mm -hmm. orient ourselves to that not what we have to have it be one way or another yeah yeah perfect well said yes and loving yourself enough to to be honest with who you are and where you are in that moment and not apologizing for it just being it Mm -hmm. and then and then you're connecting from there realizing that when you are in that space you actually extend the exact same to whatever other being is that you're coming to contact with. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right. Well, <laughs> good night. It's been fun to play. Night, everybody. Night. Happy <laughs> trails, everyone. Everybody. Fantastical, even if it's in the void. <laughs> Thank you, BG. Bye. Thank Much you, BG. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.